we will now move on to our next part of this chapter where we would learn how to calculate the number of factors for any given number now before we even do that let's understand what do we mean by a factor so when we say that a is a factor of b it simply means that a divides b or b is divisible by a now if b is divisible by a then we also can say that b is a multiple of a so when we say when we consider two numbers a and b such that a is a factor of b then a divides b and if b is a multiple of a then b is divisible by a with this knowledge let's try and understand how to calculate the number of factors for any given number suppose we talk about a number n and we take an example of the number as 900 to calculate the number of factors for the given number 900 our first step would be to split up this number in terms of its prime factors so if we factorize 900 then we definitely know that it would become 9 multiplied by 100 and hence when we write down 900 in terms of its prime factors it would be 2 square multiplied by 3 square multiplied by 5 square so our first step in trying to calculate the number of factors would be to write down the given number n as a product of prime factors so if we write it as a raised to m multiplied by b raised to n multiplied by c raised to p and so on after we split up the number in terms of its prime factors the next step would be to increase each prime factor the power of each prime factor by 1 so we will add 1 to m add 1 to n and add 1 to p and this product would finally indicate the number of factors for the given number n so for this value 900 if we increase each power by 1 then we would end up with this number 900 having 27 factors so just to summarize about the uh, procedure for finding number of factors we first express the given number in terms of its prime factors which is what we did for 900 and then increase the power of each prime factor by 1 multiply these numbers that we get and that final value which in case of 900 was 27 would be the number of factors that the number 900 would have associated with this rule for number of factors we can actually generalize and say any number which is a perfect square and the number 900 that we've taken happens to be a perfect square any number which is a perfect square would always have prime factors with powers which are multiples of 2 so if a number is a perfect square the prime factor would always have a power which is an even number similarly any number which is a perfect square would always end up with the total number of factors which would always be an odd number and this happens because we've increased each power by 1 and hence we are always going to multiply odd numbers which will lead to the final number of factors as an odd number if instead of a perfect square if we take a number which is a perfect cube for example 216 we when we express the number in terms of prime factors the prime factors would always have powers which are multiples of 3 so to summarize for perfect squares and perfect cubes perfect squares would always have prime factors which are which have powers which are even numbers and perfect cubes would always have prime factors whose powers are multiples of 3 we've seen how to calculate the number of factors for a given number suppose we now want to express a number as a product of two factors or two numbers which are coprime or relatively prime so let's understand how to do that let's again go back to our example of 900 
and we had expressed 900 in terms of prime factors as 2 square into 3 square into 5 square. So our first step would be to express the given number in terms of its prime factors. The rule would now depend on the number of prime factors that exist in the given number. So when we look at the number 900, 900 can be expressed in terms of 3 prime factors. So the rule states that the number of ways in which a given number can be expressed as a product of two numbers which are relatively prime is 2 raised to the power m minus 1 where m represents the number of prime factors for the given number. So if we take the example of 900, 900 can be expressed in terms of 3 prime factors. So the value of m in this case would be 3 and hence 900 can be expressed as a product of two numbers which are relatively prime in four different ways. Which are the four different ways? The four different ways would be 4 multiplied by the product of these two numbers which would be 225 9 multiplied by the product of these two prime factors which would be 100 25 multiplied by the product of these two which would be 4 into 9 36 and finally the fourth way would be the number itself multiplied by 1 and hence there are four ways of expressing 900 as a product of two numbers which are co-prime or relatively prime. In this chapter of divisibility test, what we have looked at till now is divisibility with respect to some numbers. Let's now move on and look at divisibility with respect to some algebraic expressions. So let's consider an algebraic expression of the type a raised to n minus b raised to n where n is odd. If we take an example, when we say a cube minus b cube, this can be simplified as a minus b into a square plus ab plus b square. So what we can learn from this expression out here, a cube minus b cube will always be divisible by a minus b and hence if we generalize any expression of the type a raised to n minus b raised to n when n is odd would always be divisible by a minus b. If I now consider another expression or rather the same expression a raised to n minus b raised to n and if we say n is even. So let's take an example. If we take an example of a raised to 4 minus b raised to 4 I can simplify this as a square minus b square into a square plus b square. This can be further simplified as a minus b into a plus b into a square plus b square. So now when we look at an expression of the form a raised to n minus b raised to n where n is even then such an expression would be divisible by a minus b and a plus b. Moving on to an expression of the form a raised to n plus b raised to n where n is odd. So if we were to take another example a cube plus b cube we can simplify this as a plus b into a square minus a b plus b square and now when we look at this expression we notice that a raised to n plus b raised to n where n is odd is always divisible by a plus b. So if we summarize this a raised to n minus b raised to n where n is odd is divisible by a minus b. a raised to n minus b raised to n where n is even is divisible by a minus b and a plus b. a raised to n plus b raised to n where n is odd is divisible by a plus b and the fourth possibility is a raised to n plus b raised to n where n is even and in such a case we don't have any rule there is no divisibility rule which can be clearly stated 
we have rules for a raised to n minus b raised to n for odd n and even n and a raised to n plus b raised to n for odd n but there, do, there is no such rule for a raised to n plus b raised to n when n is even so let's summarize the chapter of divisibility test I would like to summarize this chapter with an example suppose I talk about the number 28 we've looked at divisibility test so looking at those divisibility tests we will know that the number 28 is divisible by 2 it's also divisible by 4 it would be divisible by 7 when we apply that divisibility test of 7 moving on if I were to check is a number divisible by 28 then I can express 28 as 4 into 7 which happened to be co-prime and hence a number would be divisible by 28 if that number is divisible by 4 and by 7 we also learned how to find the number of factors for a given number so let's factorize 28 which is 2 square into 7 raised to 1 and hence the number 28 would have six factors I have just applied the rule for finding the number of factors further since the number 28 had two prime factors the number 28 can be expressed as a product of two factors which are relatively prime in only two ways and which would be the two ways it would be 1 multiplied by 28 and 4 multiplied by 7 there are six factors that the number 28 has which are these six factors the factors of the given number 28 would be 1 it would be 2 it would be 4 it would be 7 it would be 14 and it would be 28 itself so when we talk about the number of factors for a given number we are including the number 1 and the given number 28 itself and finally if we take a sum of all these factors of 28 the total of these factors would actually lead to 56 which is double the given number and this happens so because the number 28 is what is known as a perfect number how do we define a perfect number a perfect number is a number if the sum of all the factors of that number would be twice the number so this is the chapter of divisibility test where we've studied all about how to check divisibility for a number how to find the number of factors for a number and how to find the number of ways in which we can express the given number as a product of two factors which are co-prime let me just take you back to the game that we played at the beginning of this session using the playing cards if you remember we picked up cards at random and we kept performing several operations addition subtraction division multiplication and so on how is it that we ended up with the final answer as 9 well um, let me confess there was a little bit of cheating involved there because the last card that we picked up was a 9 and we asked you to multiply by 9 since we've already understood the divisibility test of 9 which is add up all the digits of the number and if the sum is divisible by 9 then the number is divisible by 9 by using the last card as a 9 and by multiplying by 9 we actually created a number which was a multiple of 9 the first few operation, operations were absolutely irrelevant because the final operation converted the number into a multiple of 9 and hence the sum of all the digits became divisible by 9 or actually became 9 itself so with a little bit of playing around with the numbers if we know the divisibility test we can actually play a lot of tricks on our friends using this concept